Now that we're back to being just two of us living at home, whenever I prepare a meal, I try to prepare enough for four people. That gives us two servings for now and two servings for later. I mean, I'm not always in the mood to cook, so it's super helpful to have a freezer full of different meals that we know are healthy and we know that we like that we can heat up real quickly. So today I'm sharing four of those with you. The most common ways I use to store freezer meals are either in these freezer Ziploc bags. I've also bought these little containers from the Dollar Tree. I've used plastic containers that have sealable lids. And then these are a new find. I love that they have these dividers because I'm not a huge fan of my food touching. The containers themselves are microwavable and they're also safe for the freezer, but the lids are not. The lids are freezer safe, but they cannot be microwaved. One of our favorites is a teriyaki chicken. I start by marinating some boneless, skinless thighs in some teriyaki marinade. I use a little bit of Diet Coke just to help tenderize the meat. We like a couple of different brands. I just marinate the meat overnight and then we'll barbecue it on the grill just a few minutes on each side, like maybe five or six minutes per side. This is currently our favorite flavor for barbecue chicken and technically it's not barbecue, it's teriyaki, but it's cooked on the barbecue. I do discard the remaining marinade. We don't use that to brush on the chicken or anything. When I put it into the containers, I'll pour just a little bit of the teriyaki sauce over the rice just so that it doesn't dry out. And then when I serve it, I serve it over a fresh bed of cabbage. I don't put the cabbage in the freezer containers because it does not freeze well and also when I'm reheating the meal I don't want the cabbage warm. This is a super easy option on those nights when you're brain dead and you just don't know what to cook. I just start by putting this tortellini into a boiling pot of water. And I do lightly salt that water. They only take a few minutes to cook but you'll know they're finished when they begin to float. Once they're all floating I pour the water off. Usually I prefer to make my own homemade red sauce but in a pinch, I'll use this pizza sauce. And the reason why I prefer the pizza sauce is because it has less sodium than the regular already prepared marinara sauce. I'll mix all those together and then portion them out in the containers. I'll also add a vegetable and then just before serving, I can toss up a green salad. I may have shared this one before, but it is still one of our all-time favorites. It's chicken parmesan. I start with my breading station, which is panko, mixed with a little bit of freshly grated parmesan cheese, along with some Italian seasoning. Mix that together well. In a separate container, add a couple of eggs, whip those together, then I butterfly my chicken and I pound it out thin. Then I dredge the chicken through the egg yolks and then through the panko mixture. And then I'll cook those until thoroughly cooked through on my stovetop, and then I'm going to transfer that to the container that I'll be using in my freezer. Add some freshly grated Parmesan cheese and some marinara sauce, and top all that with some mozzarella cheese. When I'm ready to serve, I just cook some spaghetti noodles on the stovetop, and then in my air fryer or in my oven, I just warm up the Parmesan chicken and add that on top of the spaghetti noodles. Here's a new take on pizza. I call these pinwheel pizzas. Just roll out my dough into a rectangle, like if I were making cinnamon rolls. Add the pizza sauce, mozzarella cheese, and then whatever pizza toppings we'd like. And then again, I roll it up just like I would if I was making cinnamon rolls. Slice it up and then put it on a baking sheet and bake at 425 for about 18 minutes. These are also a favorite with grandkids. I hope you enjoy these. Thanks for watching.